I'm Alan Tim, welcome to the channel. So in this video I'm going to be replacing these suspension arms with a long track control arm that go with the the subframe. Held in with this light ball joint track hood end at this side on the hub. And then I have a bolt here that fits onto the centre of the subframe. I actually get this one off already. We're not put up a bit of a fight at this end as you can see the the boot's a bit damaged already, so I ended up having to drill the nut off to get it out. And I said that's used some heat, which I'll show on the other side, to get the bolt out. Next job is to do is got to get these to the same length, as the new one is just slightly longer about a centimetre longer than the old one. So I've got this set to the right length now, same as the old one. Still need some alignment done after it's fitted. So I've got some new bolts to fit on the subframe. The old ones are a bit rusted. These are quite rusted at this end. Captive nut needed some heat to get it removed and the end got a bit mashed up with the getting it off. So I used new bolts when I put it on. And I'll show you how I got the can we move the other side and show you how I got it off. So to remove a bolt I've got these impact driver T50 socket bits. Use it on an impact driver. Get some heat into it, I've got this Waffenberger get some heat onto the butt need to put the heat on the bolt from the back get an even spread around on the captive nut to get it off so do that now So the reason I'm changing these is because of these bushes here. See how much flex there is in there. It's because it's got one compared to the new one. Can't feel any movement in that one at all. So that should improve the handling. It's getting a bit of like the motorway speed in the wet. The back end was really, really, really loose. And it's worn out about rear tyres quite a bit, so get this done and get realignment and some new rear tyres. Should be good to go. So this is a rear tyre. See your depth isn't too bad at this side here. See the wear blocks there, but when you get to this side, just above, still a bit more than one point, minimum is 1.6. There's a slightly more at the moment. Tried it with a depth gauge and it was more than, it wasn't below the minimum treaders yet so it should be okay for a few more miles so I've cleaned the sides of the nut up with a file to get them all smooth where it rusted and I've cleaned the threads with a wire brush so now I'm going to try and get this off it's a 19mm socket on there So I started loosening this nut and uh, what's happened is the nut got too stiff. So what it's done is it's popped the ball joint out instead of unscrewing the nut. So now the ball joint just spins around when you try to loosen the nut. So I'm going to have to go drilling this one off as well. Same as the others did on the other side. So 
got the other side off now, I just want to put a bit more of a fight on the first side in, probably to use a Dremel on it to cut them off. So I've got both sides off now, all ready to fit the new ones. So I've got both sides here, both brand new. So this is the off side one, this is the left hand near side. There's a bit of confusion when ordering these as to which was left, which is right. And because the left hand one has an arm on the end here on the track hood end. Whereas the right hand side one here has an O on it for left. And what I understand is these track hood ends are actually off also the same as a Ford Monday Mark Mark II, also the Ford Cougar. So this is a left hand Ford Cougar track hood end that goes on the right hand arm and the left hand arm has a right hand Ford Cougar track hood end which I assume explains why these must be from a Ford these must be Ford parts for some reason but anyway there was a bit of confusion with sellers as to which was the left and which was the right what I found is the left hand one was quite widely available but the right hand one was a bit harder to get hold of, I think I got it from Browns and Gammons but I did notice that the arms themselves are actually identical it's only the track or end that is different so if you did want a new arm you could get the opposite one and just swap the track or end so I'll get these copper greased up now and then we can fit the new arms. Some copper grease on this. Some of these captain nuts as well. Grease the bolt up. The one needs to have much rust on it, so I don't need too much. One side in. Ready to be talked to these sides in. I just had a minor issue that the track would end was the wrong way around that it wouldn't reach the hub so I've changed it the correct way around now reach the hub now Just 
tighten these up you just need a T40 bit to put in the end of the ball joint and you can just tighten it up with a 90mm spanner. Put the spanner on first. Just tighten it up when it's under load. Shut off under load. So these two take a T50 Torx bit. Get these tightened up a bit. So I'll get these off with a impact driver first. They can tighten them up. Oh, he's up to 60 newton meters now. So that's done. You just need to do the hubs up to 35 newton meters. That's all toxic. So we've got a replacement track down from Comline. It is a Ford Cougar Mondeo track end. It's a left hand one to fit the right hand arm. It's pretty much the same dimensionally. The only difference I can see is the thread on here is slightly different, slightly smaller. I'll try and get this one off now with a bit of heat and I'll fit the new one. That's the old one off, screw it off quite easily in the end, just need a bit of heat. So get the new one out. See almost identical to the old one.
free to lock this a bit. Use a cougar track or end or an MG on a rear trailing arm. This is left hand cougar track or end, feet to the right hand trailing arm. There we go, so that 